happy, happy, happy Thursday. Hopefully everyone's having an awesome week so far. The weekend's almost here and hopefully you work Monday through Friday so you get Saturday and Sunday off. I think this is a good time to remind everyone that I will be live this Sunday at 5 p.m. Central Time for all you uh, Linux people out there that Chicago time. So hopefully uh, you'll, you'll be watching, even if you want to come to harass me, my co-host. It'll be a good old time. Just a, just a reminder, just a plug for my live show. But that being said, there's a Trump raid update redacted affidavit to be released. Now I know some people don't like the... Uh, New York Times, but you know, I could actually view the story without any headaches, without any backtracking, any of that. So that's what I'm going to use. Washington federal judge on Florida on Tuesday ordered the redacted version of the affidavit used to obtain a warrant for the former President Donald J. Trump, Florida's residence to be unsealed noon on Friday, paving the way for disclosure of potential revelatory details about the search with enormous legal and political implications. This decision by Judge Bruce E. Reinhardt comes just hours after the Justice Department submitted the proposal for extensive redactions to the document in the effort to shield the witnesses from intimidation or retribution if it's made public, officials said. I don't think we need to know who the witnesses are. We don't need to know all that. We just need to know why. Judge Weinhardt appeared to accept the requested cuts and moving more quickly than the government lawyers expected, directed the department to release the redacted affidavit in a brief two-page order issued by the Federal District Court in Southern Florida. The order said that he had found that the Justice Department proposal redaction to be narrowly ta tailored served the government's legitimate interest and integrity of the ongoing investigation. It'd be kind of interesting to see what the outcome of this investigation is. I really do, because it really seems to be in one direction, you know. Hunter's laptop gets released. The owner of the computer store gets under investigation. The the daughter of Biden, Ashley Biden, leaves her dollar, uh, not dollar, but diary behind. The people that find it pled guilty. I'm trying to sell it across state lines. It seems to be really one direction. It seems like if it goes against Biden, if it goes against the Democratic Party or the Uniparty, they go after you, and Donald Trump went after the Uniparty. No, but it's still, I mean, that's just my personal opinion. Let's see here. I'm going to redaction. He added, or at least... Humanist alternative sealed the entire affidavit. It was, oh, honorous alternative to seal the entire affidavit in its most complete form. The document would reveal important details about the government's justification for taking extraordinary steps of searching Mar-a-Lago on August 8th. The ruling is significant legal mild post for an investigation. It has swiftly emerged as a major threat to Mr. Trump, whose lawyer who have offered a confused and at times stumbling response, but also an inflection point that Attorney General Mark B. Garland, who is trying to balance protecting the prosecutor process by keeping secret details of the investigation and provide enough information to defend his decision to request the search or request a search. Now there's also a document showing that uh, Mamie Biden was on it, but I don't have that news article pulled up. And I really haven't looked into it, but 
Seems plausible. They're clearly opposite poles here, said Daniel C. Richmond, a formal federal prosecutor and law professor at Columbia University who added that it may be difficult or even impossible for Mr. Garland to strike the right balance. Judge Reinhardt surprised prosecutor last week by saying that he was inclined to release portions of the affidavit at the request of the news organizations, including the New York Times, after the government proposed redactions. Under typical circumstances, the closing even partial versions of the affidavit would be highly unusual, but this isn't a usual raid. This isn't a raid on you and me. This isn't a raid on the celebrity. This is a raid on the former president of the United States. I'm sorry for the people that says no one is above the law. They should be treated like everyone else equally. But unfortunately, them being elected president changes the rules a little bit. I'm sorry, I, we have to accept that. I probably have the stance if this was Obama or even Biden when he gets out of office or even Bush Jr. or Clinton. Once you're president, certain rules and procedures had to be come up to make sure that this isn't looking like a political hit job. Because right now, it kind of looks like it's a political hit job. But of course, I am open to any evidence that says otherwise. But this is right. Under typical circumstances, this closing even partial version of the affidavit would be highly unusual because it usually gets released when someone is charged. So the lawyer defending the person can build a case or defend their case. This right here tends to, uh, can't, I know it gives an unfair advantage towards the defense of Donald Trump, allowing them to build a defense team, but he was a former, well, he is a president. He's not the acting president, but he's a former president. And the news seems to um, really love Trump, turned his presidency into something it shouldn't have been, and now this looks like a political hit job. Such documents, which tend to include evidence gathered to justify the search, like information provided by witnesses, are almost never unsealed before the government files grumble charges. There's no indication that the Justice Department plans to file charges anytime soon. But Judge, but Judge Reinhardt recognizes the significance of the government's case had it made clear in recent days that he wanted the government to provide far more detailed justification for the search than the bare-bones legal rationale outlined in the unsealed warrant. Which, yes, I mean, I know people say nobody's above the law. He's no longer currently president. He's entitled to the same treatment that everyone gets. If that was true, then the Secret Service wouldn't be guarding him. I don't have a Secret Service guarding me. He really reiterated this week that he might agree to extensive redaction, acknowledging that they could be severe enough to render the release in the final documents meaningless. I cannot say at this point that that particular redaction would be so extensive that it will result into a meaningfully disclosure but may ultimately reach a conclusion after hearing further from the government. He wrote in an order issued on Monday, the Justice, Depart Justice Department spokesman can't speak today. Though a Justice Department spokesman did not have an immediate comment of the judge's decision, Justice Department officials have previously suggested they would abide by his general guidance but push hard to scrub anything that would expose the witness in the case of intimidation or retribution by Mr. Trump's supporter. After the search of Marty Lago, the FBI reported a surge of threats against its agency, and an armed man tried to breach the Berlin Cincinnati field office for being killed in a shootout with local police. Sorry, that guy was a moron, and now he's dead. 
Mr. Garland also oversees the sprawling or the sprawling investigations into the attack on the Capitol on January 6, 2021, which has increasingly focused the uh, focus on actions of Mr. Trump and his supporters. Can we be honest here? Most people that stormed the Capitol weren't Trump supporters because he was still speaking. He was still speaking when they stormed the Capitol. Most Trump supporters would not leave when he was speaking. Can, can we at least agree to that? Maybe they may have agreed with Trump, but they weren't his supporters. They may have voted for him, but they didn't support him. Supporters, the Attorney General has repeatedly said that he is going where the evidence leads him. Unmoved by political considerations or concerns about the backlash without fear or favor. So why did uh, Biden classify a lot of documents Trump took with him? I mean, that's kind of what the story I got is uh, Trump declassified a lot of the materials that took with him. And then Biden turned around and classified some of the documents, which is a theory leading to this raid. The Attorney General, unusual decision this month, the call for the judge to unseal the warrant itself stemmed from a recognition that the search required public explanation rather than refusing to comment about current investigations, as he typically does, people close to him said. Mr. Garland said his aides did not see that call or the news conference that accompanied it as a strategic shift, others have, and some who back his tight lip caution towards January 6th investigation now says that he should adopt a posture of complete disclosure on the Mar-a-Lago search to defend the integrity of the investigation because he is a former president. He's a former president. And that's, that's my whole argument is he's a former president. Yes, I don't think he, as a former president, he's above the law. And if he did commit a crime, tell us what crime he committed. I would continue on, but this is kind of a hard read, just like most New York Times stories are. I'm just curious of what uh, a couple of the comments are. From San Diego, again, a two-tiered system with Trump winning where everyone else would be jailed rather than do the standard we deviate to deal with an idiot who will not who will now send his minions to inflict as much pain and suffering for those involved in the pursuit of justice potentially there some may die due to the need of extreme retribution i disagree with you man And, he, and guess what? The January 6th investigation traveled to Copenhagen to view Roger Stone's pleasure documentary. Hopefully we can see this dirty trickster in the next hearing. He's a thief that's simple. He stole valuable items that did not belong to him. He's a citizen, not a king, and should be treated like a, by the law of coring. If you or I went to the White House and stole many valuables, we would end up indicated and convicted well you know hillary clinton and the clintons when they left the president they stole a bunch of crap and had to return it i mean this is probably gonna be more uh anti-trump but my i'm only interested to make sure that this isn't a political hit job this isn't about politics that is my main gripe about this because right now them being tight-lipped not explaining themselves. I'm not asking for them to lay out the whole evidence. I just want them to make their case that protects the integrity of their case to say why this was justified. Is that too much to ask for? Is that really too much to ask for? With that being said, that is my um, video for today. Please leave a comment down below what your thoughts are. Do you think Trump is being treated fairly or do you think he's being treated unfairly? Do you think he should be 
going to prison? Should he be arrested or should he be left alone? Leave a comment down below on what your thoughts are. And please smash the like and subscribe button on any and all platforms or just the platform you're currently watching. But most importantly, have yourself a wonderful day, morning or evening.